This is Grow Omaha Uncut, where you can watch our radio show, including what goes on in the commercial breaks. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Well, it is a great place to live and visit, and we're glad that you have joined us to hear all about it. My name is Jeff Beals, your co-host from NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate Company, Omaha's premier commercial real estate brokerage and property management firm. We're also brought to you by D&M Roofing, that team of roofers and support people who do amazing work on both commercial and residential buildings. Well, without any further ado, it's time to introduce my co-host, a man who has been one busy real estate broker lately, Trenton Magid. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeff. Yeah, so uh, it's been a busy uh, busy week, a busy quarter. We were just talking about that before the show. There's a lot going on in our market right now. There really is. and We're seeing, not only are we seeing big industrial deals, land deals, we're seeing office deals and retail deals. And, and don't think that uh, commercial real estate's slowing down. And, and we see it in residential, and more people hear about the residential market. But uh, well, the Omaha economy is very strong. Uh, just uh, this week, uh, someone told me that one of the biggest residential builders in uh, the city uh, is uh, no longer selling houses for the foreseeable future uh, because the list of uh, people uh, that have already purchased one and are waiting for it to be built is too long. Wow. You know, I know Celebrity Homes really well, and and, uh, they're always busy. I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about or not, but they're certainly, uh, they got to catch up. Uh, All the home builders are probably playing catch up. Well, let's bring on Brad Williams. Everyone knows Brad. He is with ENA Consulting, a civil engineering firm, and also has Brad Williams Photography, uh, one of the most renowned photographers in the Omaha area. Brad, good morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me back. Well, we always appreciate having you on. Thanks for everything you do for Grow Omaha. Um, And oftentimes when you come on the show, it's because we're doing the call-in show. Well, that's what we're doing. (laughs) It's the call-in show today. a little bit, too. What's that? It's been a little bit since we've done one. Yeah. Yes, because when we were supposed to have the last one, uh, there was something going on. We, we were really busy, so we ended up just talking the whole time. Yeah, we talked. There was so much on the planning board that month that we talked about the planning board the entire show. That's what it was. Jorge was with us, and yeah. we were going to do the call in, but yeah, there was just too much to talk about, and we had to get it all in. So yeah, this has been about four months. Yeah. So you got a lot of questions built up. So four all o- in. 402-558-1110 will be the phone number. We'll start taking calls after we get through the news. And speaking of the news, it's brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. Holly Schneidwind and her team at Eagle Mortgage are the best when it comes to helping you finance your new house or refinance your existing loan. It's going to be another crazy year. Um, the residential housing market is going to be bonkers this year. And it's February. That's when it starts to really heat up. If you are even thinking about buying a new house this year, make an appointment with Eagle Mortgage. You can find them online at eaglemortgagecompany.com. Call them. Stop by the office at 114th and Davenport. But make an appointment. You want to get a pre-approval letter so that you know what you qualify for. And if you find yourself in a competitive bidding situation, which you very may, very well may, You'll have uh, that nice weapon, that pre-approval letter. Doesn't matter whether it's a conventional loan or FHA, VA. They do all that. EagleMortgageCompany.com. All right, guys, a few things on the news. Uh, First of all, we have some details about a project we talked about a couple weeks ago at 39th and Dodge. This is the uh, four or five-story apartment building that would sit on the site of the old infamous Travel Inn, which was thankfully demolished in 2006. Uh, But this is a really cool project, classic infill uh, stuff. But the two things we've found out, number one, it's going to be called The View. That's the name. We didn't know what The View. The View or The View on 39th? The View on 39th. And Public Works wants to close 39th Street for about a block uh, north of Dodge because uh, they figure, I I think with that that big hill there, and Brad, you know this stuff with your engineering background, that big hill there, traffic, they're a little worried about safety. So that's kind of the, you know, the, the what do we think about that? And, you know, kind of interesting what the neighbors think and all that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm guessing the line of sight for the speed of the road is probably not very safe. Uh, it's too bad, you know, we were talking about how in urban areas we really like the connectivity of all the open roads, but I can see their point in the, the safety issue on this one. 
And, you know, sometimes in order to get a good project, you go ahead and you, um, and you allow certain things like that. But what you don't want is for people to start thinking, oh, okay, we can close streets for four-story apartment buildings anywhere. Yeah, and the, the other thing about this street is it dead ends two blocks north when it hits the Jocelyn Castle. So it's not like it's a main road that they're closing off. It's a pretty short street to begin with. Well, this really adds to the to the urban density, and, and, and that's what it's all about along the – uh, bus route, um, the orbit to make sure that we're, we're building up and not just out. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point. And you guys, uh, you know, if the goal, if one of the goals of orbit was to create a lot of uh, development density along the Dodge Corridor, it's working uh, because this proposed project is just one of many uh, that is within two blocks of Dodge or so where. You know, you're, you know, and they love these pedestal buildings, right? Where you put one floor of steel and concrete, then you can throw four floors of wood frame on top of that. So you get um, a five story building, and the ground floor either is indoor parking or sometimes it's office or retail space. Um, it's a great system. And I don't think we have even seen anything when it comes to transit oriented development and, and more density along Dodge. And we'll get the same thing along Farnham when the streetcar comes along. And with that, uh, we want to talk a little bit about retail. And we've got a couple of uh, cool retail things to bring up. The first one is Warby Parker. Uh, Warby Parker has the stylish glasses. And we have not had one of those in Nebraska or Iowa. Uh, but that's about ready to change. There's going to be a location coming soon to Village Point. And... Um, Warby Parker, you know, they have a bunch of locations, I think 160 locations around the world, if I remember correctly. And a lot of people in the metro area have been clamoring uh, for that one to come along. So that's a nice catch for us. In fact, let me give you a couple details. They're based in New York City. Like I said, 160 stores. The closest existing locations are Kansas City and Minneapolis. So that'll be a, a nice addition. And then, Brad, you were out at Nebraska Crossing this week and noticed that some uh, site prep work has started for the REI store. Yeah, I saw they were moving dirt to the east side of the Under Armour building. So, See, that's, that's huge. And, and to see these bricks-and-mortar retailers taking the risk, coming in, and, and, you know, obviously there are a lot of specialty stores, the, you know, camping, and our REI is very specialized, as well as Warby Parker, and, and seeing that, that – companies are bringing their storefronts to the people. It's awesome. Yeah, those are a couple, like I say, those are a couple brands that people have wanted here for a long time. REI tried to get into this market, shoot, six, seven years ago, but it just didn't work out. The, the right spot was not available. And then some, it, there were a few things that just didn't work out for them. And so they're kind of behind getting here, but they're finally coming, uh, which is which is a good thing. So Epley Airport has a new airline. That. Uh, Cargo, but Cargo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you and I can't fly on it, but um, Amazon Air uh, has come to uh, Omaha's Epley Airport. The inaugural flight uh, landed early Thursday morning, and this is Amazon Air's first regional gateway in Nebraska. The purpose of it is to support fast, efficient package deliveries to Amazon customers. Now, they call it Amazon Air, but the photo from uh, the airport authority that uh, came out Thursday says Prime Air, but it has the Amazon smiley face on the tail wing. And uh, so this is really cool. You know, a Amazon uh, continues to go uh, gangbusters. Now, here, here's something interesting. This came from a press release that the airport authority sent to the media. It says Amazon has created more than 500 jobs with 1,000 indirect jobs supported on top of the company's direct hires since 2010 in Nebraska. It's also invested $250 million in Nebraska over the past decade, including infrastructure and compensation to employees. Uh, and that has created an additional $200 million in gross domestic product to the Nebraska economy. And that's got to be over and above their warehouses and everything else. Well, yeah, because I'm thinking that that w just that one warehouse that they built— Billion. Uh, at Highway 50 and 370, it's got to be hundreds of millions, isn't it, with Easy. all the stuff in there and the equipment and Easy. the robotics and everything else? So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Did you see what else was at the airport this week? What was? The New England Patriots jet. Really? It had the big New England Patriots logo on the side, five Super Bowl trophies on the tail. It was 
It was there Thursday and Friday. I don't know if it's still there today. but What was it doing? I, I don't know. It was parked right by the side of the road, so, of course, it was all over people's social media pages this week. I did not notice yeah. that. How cool is that? Now, uh, You're uh, bragging when you put your five Super Bowl trophies on your tail of your airplane. But don't they have, like, they have more than that, or don't whatever. they? I don't yeah. know the exact number. but I think Tom Brady won six of them there. Yeah, maybe that was. Because he has seven, and one of them was a Tampa, yeah. so, so they must have at least six. Um that's a lot of Super Bowl trophies. Yeah. Maybe it's an old plane. Yeah, and they just parked it in Omaha. <laughs> I want, Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder if that was just a promotional thing or if it's actually their plane. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a believer in capitalism, the free free market, and free markets. But remember when we were kids when they broke up AT&T? Yep. And AT&T is huge again now. But, like, what about uh, the fang companies and, and Amazon and Facebook and Google? How much bigger do they have to be? Right now, than AT and T was when they when they broke up and made baby bells and all of that. I think you bring up a good point, and you know there have been a lot of business journalists that cover Amazon that that bring that issue up a lot. Gosh, I guess I just I wouldn't be surprised at all uh, because better lobbyists or something. There, I mean, there will come a point in time in which you know, like you'll have uh, the United States, China, Japan, and Amazon as the four largest world economies, right? Right. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Yeah, eventually there probably comes a point in time in which can you keep it, can you keep it that big uh, because it, basically, it becomes and, and, its own and, world economy. And, and so not just vertically integrated, but in different markets, I mean, from groceries to, you know, all their online and, you know, they'll do storefronts and and cargo and everything else. I mean, it's again, it's 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 it'll be interesting to see what the future holds. And, and I'm not saying break them up today. I'm saying it just bears the question. All right, it's a very good question. And uh, let's go into our last news story we have for today's news segment. And fellas, you may remember, oh, what was it? Last late spring or early summer, we talked about the Flatiron District downtown. We had the developer in the studio, and and this was going to be uh, a project where they're going to renovate the six-story uh, Standard Oil building at 18th and Howard and then build a big uh, four-story, five-story apartment building, maybe two of them. And um, so we now have a few more details about that. The the building is actually going to be called Bauhaus. Ba- it's that it's that old uh, German uh, design theory that came out decades ago, and I can never I don't know is it Bauhaus or Bauhaus, B A U H A U S. I remember when I was in college, there was a class we were studying design theories, and I remember I learned all about it. Uh, Bauhaus, we'll call it. That's what the project's going to be called, and the site is bordered. It's a almost a trapezoid shaped uh, lot. And it's uh, bordered by Howard, 18th, 19th, and St. Mary's Avenue downtown. That historic six-story Standard Oil building to which I referred will be right on the northeast corner of the project. That will be converted into 40 studio and one-bedroom apartments. And then, kind of around that, to the west and sort of south of it, plans call for a 118,000-square-foot building to be constructed on a an existing surface lot. That'll have... 120 apartments plus four street level commercial base. Great project. We've been kind of waiting for that one to get started and looks like final plat approval has gone through. So presumably that could start pretty soon. It'd be great infill project for that area. Absolutely. We don't like surface parking lot downtown. Right. It adds to the mix, more population downtown. And, you know, kind of going back to an issue we've been talking about a lot the last two weeks, the streetcar. The streetcar will make it even easier for more street uh, surface parking lots to go away uh, because you won't need so much open parking because you'll be able to move people easier from parking garages to buildings. And that'll be fun to see. All right. Should we put a wrap on the news? Let's wrap it. We're going to wrap up that news. And it was brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com, where they know mortgages. It's call-in time. We've got one person online right now. She'll be first, uh, Ellie. But if you want to get in behind Ellie, call 402-558-1110, 402-558-1110. You can ask about anything as long as it's directly related to Omaha Growth and Development. So you're listening to Jeff. Trenton and Brad on Grow Omaha, brought to you by DM Roofing and NAI NP Dodge. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Hi, this is Eric. Sure. I'm going to knock. When a storm hits your commercial oh, wow. property, you feel overwhelmed. Oh, that is cool. You know, it's either it's either their plane or. Oh, I didn't see. They licensed. Oh, that oh there you go. 
get vaccinated. Wonder if they're on a special tour. Uh, <laughs> they're on a public service. Campaign. Who else is in town? When we were driving here, I saw the Wienermobile. Oh yeah, yeah. I did too. Yeah. It was parked at that hotel that used to be the Federal Reserve. On. Yeah, the yeah, Reserve. Very Yeah, yeah. I saw it. Where? They actually right by First National Tower, the downtown uh, residence. Tom in. Stanton, mm. <laughs> his wife is like a high up with the uh, Eastern Breast Office on Aging. Uh-huh. Apparently, the Wienermobile did Meals on Wheels deliveries. Oh, no way. Oh, really? couple, yeah. Were they wieners? <laughs> no, they were just... Every, meal, every email is every an Oscar Mayer product. product. Yeah, do you want That's me to kind of chop product. that hot dog up for you, or do you want to choke on it? I think I said email. Every, every meal. meal. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I call it Groma <laughs> Uncut, ladies and gentlemen. Bruce? We lost three senior and citizens this week. <laughs> what are you calling about? <laughs> Meanwhile, Raj is trying to take a call. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Sorry, Raj. Sorry, Raj. Um. <laughs> What's that expecting? <laughs> okay. But Trenton sometimes is inappropriate. <laughs> Only sometimes. Only sometimes. Okay. That's, that sounds good. That's all I need to know. I'll put you on hold. We'll be with you in just a couple minutes. I love these commercials right now. It's like, experts all agree with the 401k K has been a dismal failure. <laughs> okay. I don't think so. Uh, What's I think it seems to be keeping a lot of people uh, in pretty good financial you, shape in their retirement. I don't know if you have complaints, but for the last five or six weeks, uh, you retired the legendary deal maker status. Oh, but he's come back for this week. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I've heard about that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my friend, the legendary real estate deal maker, Trenton Maggot. That's Carol, stuck to the right? digital. Okay, Carol, hold on. <laughs> what do you say instead of stuck to the tape? I still say it's stuck to the tape. Grow Omaha. Uh -huh. What's in the can? In the tin. Okay, Bill. What were you doing? Filling up fast today. Usually they wait till the end of the Yeah. We're going we're gonna to actually have to work for a living today. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Hold on the line. What are they building next to the... Casey's and the uh, uh, Grow Omaha. What's your first name? The restaurant depot there on Harrison. To so Ronco's or right, something. Oh, uh, apartments. Uh, yeah, yeah, apartments. I think there's right. like 81 or so apartments that part of the Streck Laboratories. They got approved for um, workforce development apartments. That's oh. how they got it done on the industrial ground. Gotcha. I forgot about that. Yeah, that yeah, was part of it. Is something being built out at hold on line, the old, uh, our old office over at? Um, I want to know the same. Models. I wondered the same thing. Somebody asked me. Right, about here that. we go. People wrote in. On the fourteenth. It's showtime. The phones are ringing, and this is Jeff Beal sitting next to the legendary real estate deal maker Trenton Magid, who is sitting next to our favorite <laughs> photographer Brad Williams of Brad Williams Photography and ENA Consulting. He's legendary as well. He is. We're brought to you by uh, DNM Roofing and NAINP Dodge. Okay, we're going to take some calls, and uh, Ellie has been first, and then we have a few others that we'll get to as soon after Ellie. But Ellie, good morning. Welcome to the show. Hi, my name is Ellie, and I am in third grade, and I'm eight years old. And I'm wondering why they're making the Mutual of Omaha building. They're just using more money, and less people can fit into it. Well, and they're... And they're making it super tall, which is going to take up even more money. Yeah. Well, Ellie, first of all, um, kudos to you for being mature enough to call in to a radio show like this. And uh, so, guys, let's go ahead and take a stab at Ellie's question. Who wants to start? Uh, I think uh, Brad should start. Oh. I, as far as the cost, uh, I don't know that it's any more than a, a normal building it's uh, it's pretty typical cost to build a building uh height it makes a little bit of a difference but uh they need buildings kind of change over time and the you know the heating and air conditioning change over time the electrical changes over time and then the biggest thing since mutual has been built is you know, all the communications the data the internet um, things have really changed over the years and sometimes it's just easier for a company the size of mutual instead of trying to remodel floor by floor to just build something new and uh it's you know, that it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for their old campus for people to redevelop that into housing and shopping. And um, there's, th it's a big project. There's a lot of facets to it. And, you know, the, the big picture, this is going to be great for Omaha. Yeah, it costs a lot of money, 
but it's also going to generate a lot of money. It's going to generate a lot of new taxes. It's going to uh, help our growth. It's really going to it's going to be a, a, an asset that's going to help attract people to Omaha. Yeah, skyscrapers are very expensive buildings, and uh, the higher you go up when you're building a skyscraper. Uh, you don't just increase by the number of floors, you increase even more than that because um, uh, height costs a lot of money. So when big companies are thinking about building their headquarters, the cheapest thing for them to do is to go build a bunch of, you know, two, three, four story buildings on a big campus out in the, the suburbs of a city. But sometimes uh, big companies want to be in the most exciting, desirable, coolest part of town. One of the reasons they do that is it helps them attract talented employees because it's an exciting place to work. And sometimes they do it because they care about the city that they're in and they want to create a landmark for the city and help the city uh, kind of have a better vibe to it. And then the fourth reason, or rather a third reason, is that big skyscrapers are like an advertisement for a company. So if you're a company like Mutual that can afford it, uh, there are a lot of benefits to having a big building like that in a high profile place. L.A., I appreciate the call, and I, I understand your apprehension, and I don't think these guys know what they're talking about. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, I, I think all, those are all valid points and, and, and reasons for it, but it's an a, a iconic building that's going to be built downtown. The, as Brad said, the first their, their campus dates back several dozen years or several decades, and it'll be repurposed, so that structure sh- shouldn't be wasted. That area will grow as well. Uh, just like when Midtown Crossing was built around their campus, all those neighborhoods and concentric circles, people cleaned up their houses, the the prices went up, the, the tax base went up, allowing for more money for public streets and, and public services. And then downtown, uh, it'll bring a lot more excitement, just like the park. So uh, very good uh, observation and questions. Okay, well, we're going to move on and we're going to keep our eye on Ellie because uh, she might show up in the uh, the planning department someday after college. Okay, our next uh, caller is Bruce. Good morning, Bruce, and welcome to the show. Hello. Hey there. Uh, I'd like to have a little bit more expansion on the housing projects that uh, uh, east of uh, 30th Street uh, project. 75, uh, kind of who owns it, and uh, how big a project is that eventually going to be? Uh, the announcements came out about the starting it about two weeks ago. Is this uh, addition on, was it North 30th? Uh, or the 75 North project that started several years ago and has just continued to evolve over the years? The Highlander project yes, at 30th, talking- 30th and Lake. And then there's also, you might also be talking there was a World Herald article yeah, recently. The Sherwood Foundation. Yeah, that talked about some developers producing single-family homes uh, not terribly far from there. That, so he could be referring to that. But there are quite a few efforts underway to renovate and redevelop uh, and rejuvenate parts of, of North Omaha. And that Highlander 75 North project has been a big success. There's room for more there, though. And, and repurposing empty lots and, and taking down houses that need need help. I, I think it's it's a wonderful uh, project and, and to watch that thing expand over the years and, and they seem very bullish on it and there's a lot of money behind it. Yeah. He was asking if he knew who developed it I, and I don't know that off the top of my head. Not off the top of my head. I think it's a head. consortium of, of, of different companies. Yeah, and there have been some nonprofit organizations that have been involved in some of those efforts. Susie hey, Buffett's organization, whether it's Sherwood, Sherwood or, 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 or affiliate of that, is overseeing it. On a somewhat related note, uh, sometime this spring, we plan on uh, having the Omaha Municipal Land Bank on the show and uh, and their efforts to purchase um, substandard houses or vacant lots and and help facilitate new residential development on those. So we'll have that coming up fairly soon. Let's do one more call before we get to the middle of the show commercial break. And the next up is Winston. Good morning, Winston, and welcome. Good morning. Hi there. Hey, I have a question about uh, 136 and Cornhusker near the, the new little small Amazon facility. Who built that huge building over there? It's got yellow, yellow that's, on it. Uh, that's friends of ours. That is um, uh, White Lotus Development, Arun Agrawal and his team built a 300,000 square foot building. And I believe that's going to be XPO, a third party logistics company. That was That's a huge building. Um, 
There's another building where uh, Home Depot has, it's not a store, but it's a Home Depot storage warehouse, distribution warehouse. And then I believe there will also be uh, Scooter's Coffee took a big chunk. You know, Scooter's has grown around the country, and uh, it's, I don't know if it's storage or production and distribution, probably a little bit of every, all parts of that. But that uh, it's right across from Hilltop. Um, what's that development called? Do you know, Brad? I, I-80 Logistics Park. I-80 Logistics and logistics there. park, but uh, White Lotus is a very uh, capable uh, developer. There's two of those yellow buildings. Two of those yellow buildings done, and then I saw yesterday or the day before they were pushing dirt on a yet another site on the north end of that uh, little. There's a little lake in the middle. Yeah, they did a good job because that wasn't an easy site uh, to no. develop. You got you had some a lot of grade, a lot of, a lot of grade. Yeah, it's very water waterways there. And we appreciate your call. And with that, we are going to take our middle of the show break. But Carol, Bill, and Jim, please stay on the line because you three will be the next that we go to after the break. For anyone else who wants to get in the queue, the phone number is 402-558-1110. It's the call-in show. Ask anything related to Omaha growth and development, and we'll take a stab at it. You're listening to Jeff Beals, Trenton Maggot, and Brad Williams on Grow Omaha, brought to you by d Roofing and NAINP Dodge. Back in a moment on New News Radio 1110 KFAB. I don't, I don't think I was very clear in my answer to the third grader, but no, you did great. obviously some of the building. I no. say, yeah. someone's <laughs> pissed about the someone's pissed about that project. I should have said yes. The building is more expensive, but if you add up everything that goes with it, experience yeah. and they weigh each other out. So it's interesting uh, what the, like that, these guys don't know their time. What exactly the agenda was behind that call? Yeah, you know, yeah, it could be a lot. Specifically, say you're tearing down my library, which yeah. I yeah. thought that's where that was. Good. We, we should have, we should have been like, uh, uh, what was her name? Sure. Uh, Ellie. Ellie. Uh, Ron. Ellie. What do you think the cost differentiation is? At least they ask, ask her a question back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we in trouble for hazing a third grade. Well, uh, more I tell you what, though, good on her for having the hood spot uh, and yeah. the back to do it. A lot of kids, uh, it's kind of intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, she's just talking on the phone. My dad says she's you guys are slackers. <laughs> <laughs> what was that from Airplane when they're talking to Kareem Abdul Jabbar? You don't hustle. Yeah, my dad says you don't hustle. <laughs> what do you guys, uh, you tell your dad. <laughs> what do you call a magician if he loses his magic? What? Ian. <laughs> what is it? You know, Ian. it's a shame. It's a shame he's not a dad because he's got a lot of dad jokes. So I figured out that it takes me it takes me 15 minutes to walk to the bar, but it takes me 45 minutes to walk from the bar back to home. The difference is staggering. <laughs> it's amazing what you can find on Facebook. <laughs> dad jokes. Um, what has four letters, <coughs> sometimes has nine, but never has five? I can't do math. We don't math in this show, especially with cameras. <coughs> face, I'm not going to do math simultaneously. <coughs> what has four letters, sometimes has nine letters, can't do it, and never has five? He's actually a stating that. Just an affirmative question. What has four letters? Just a. Okay, now I get it. W A T. See, I can't do logic on the radio. It's too much pressure. Brad, could you have answered? Too much logic for 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. All right. What's black and white and has 16 wheels? A zebra on roller skates. Not a bad dad joke for preschool kids. Oh, so cute. How do you make a How do you make a hot dog stand? Your kids will love this one. Take away his chair. Already, you must try our signature Detroit style pizzas. The crispy caramelized cheese crust. Next, next week on Girl Mahan Cup, we'll tell the dirty jokes. You have a few of those, but we're going to keep those among ourselves. On Sunday, Backlot Pizza and Kitchen serves brunch two ways. Order off the menu or take part. Why do bowls wear bells? For more information about all of our stuff, we're at Backlot Pizza. Bowls. So we said, yeah, what bowls? Bowls. I thought you said balls. I'm like, I don't get that. <laughs> I don't, you're like, and I'm not sure I, I like where this is going. <laughs> What's the last thing they do when, uh, before the Tickle Me Elmo leaves the factory? You give them two testicles. <laughs> Barrel, I actually have heard that one before. <laughs> Most of you have Oh, we got Laura and Dean. Wait a moment. Oh, but we're supposed to start, start with Carol. With Carol. And, okay, Carol, Bill, Jim, Laura, and Dean, and that'll probably take us out. 
So I won't give the number again. Okay. Unless a bunch of them hang up because they don't want to wait. That middle of the... Oh, what should we say about now? Mm -hmm. We do the, we have the library oversight, and it's going well. And they, oh, yeah. This, yeah this, you can talk about that. Yeah. He's part of the library? They're, uh, they're, they were the company that was hired to facilitate and manage the move. You set up the Donald Home Spotlight, we'll say, okay. and another of their diverse companies, project management. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit, and then I'll go like this, and you're like, hey, you know they're really into project management. See, this is how sausage gets made, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we start like this, and we ended up like this. We're like, what, what the <laughs> hell are we going to talk about? Oh, yeah, we, we, we work it out. It's, we come to a consensus. We had all this planned, scripted, uh, earlier in the week. Yeah. Like we forgot. It's, it's funny, because you do script a lot of the beginning, yeah. but the novel is always like, well, what should we talk about? We're going to, um, I've been meaning to schedule, uh, Sam Noddle and Trent and I are going to have a Zoom call, and I've been meaning to do this for two weeks, and a couple times a year, uh, I get on the phone with them or whatever, and we talk about all their stuff, and I get updates, and it, it usually gives me a good six or seven weeks worth of mm -hmm. content for their spot. Plus other stuff that comes out on their projects in between. Yeah, yeah. and they got so many things going on, they, there's often a lot of news, but I also like to have just some stuff if I... It's interesting, too. Sometimes you're just driving down the street and you see a, a commercial place and it has the novel sign out for you. Mm -hmm. and realize the novel did it. And often, sometimes I call Jay and Sam like, uh, you guys didn't tell me about this project and I'm your, uh, you know, your radio promoter here. We need to know these things. <laughs> You've been to like bowling on. I think when it first opened, I put that on our list that for where to yeah. go on March 4th, but no one seemed to... No one was somewhere to go tonight. Um, how about how about uh, boiler room? You know, God honest, I've never been there, and I put that on the list because I've been wanting to go there for years. And someone, I was just in New Orleans and got uh, addicted to Sazeracs, those cocktails. Okay. And I saw somewhere where it's a Sazerac. Uh, it has Sazerac rye whiskey, a little bit of sweet Peychaud, New Orleans bitters. Uh, ab an absinthe, the wrists, rinse, you know, they rinse the glass with that. It, they're amazing. Those a little uh, lemon peel in it. And someone online said that the bartender at the boiler room makes the best Sazerac in Omaha. And I've also heard Herb Sant as well, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, I've never been to the boiler room either. And yeah. people I know that are really, really in the restaurants just swear up and down. That's the best restaurant in the city. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. We need to go sometime. 30. Go good night? Um, I would, but we have to schlep eighth graders to Pizza Ranch after uh, uh, they do the bake sale at church tonight. Ooh. That's birth control right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, but it's a shame because he's got the... I don't know if I'd call them the best, but a big collection of dad jokes. Yeah. All right, here we go. And Grow Omaha is back on the air. Jeff Beal sitting next to the legendary real estate dealmaker, Trenton Maggot. We also have Brad Williams of ENA Consulting and Brad Williams Photography. This show is brought to you by DNM Roofing, Omaha's premier residential and commercial roofing contractor, and also NAINP Dodge. We've got uh, a few more calls here we're going to take for our call in show. But before we get to Carol, Bill, Jim, Lauren, and Dean, uh, we do want to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, some commercial real estate development happenings. Uh, courtesy of Noddle Companies. Noddle Companies is headquartered here in Omaha. They do projects all over the United States. Here in Omaha, they're famous for Exarban Village, uh, Rivers Edge, uh, Village Point Medical Campus, Steel Ridge, and so many other projects in Trenton. Um, lately, uh, we found out that Noddle Companies is doing a project that a lot of people didn't realize that they do. Well, yeah, Noddle Companies are, is big in project management. They're very capable in organizing projects, and, and they uh, submitted a uh, uh, or responded to an RFP for the city of Omaha and the Omaha Library, and they were the successful uh, company. And they are the ones that are, are, are working with contractors, subcontractors, and uh, library uh, specialists in order to carry out the transformation of 
the W. Dale Clark Library downtown, oversee the uh, the build out and the construction of the 30,000 square foot branch library down at 1401 Jones. Then also a project that I'm involved with, the 90,000 square foot administration, uh, distribution, uh, warehousing, and uh, the keeper of the genealogy and the public records requests and things like that at 84th and Frederick. So congratulations to the Nottle companies. It's a huge project, but they've got the expertise to work with the professionals, bring in the library consultants, solicit bids, take those bids to the city and uh, make that a successful project on a quick timeline. And you can find out more about them at noddlecompanies.com. All right, to the phones. Carol has been waiting the longest. Good morning, Carol. Welcome. Hi, gentlemen. Thank you for taking my call. So my question is around mutual, like Ellie's. I am fine, though, with them building and the opportunities that it will bring to the city. However, the trolley. Was there any discussion or investigation into the current bus line that's going there? Like, Ellie, I think if we you know, don't have to spend the money, we can re-envision what we currently have. So I guess I will leave it to you. Has, was there any discussion about using the bus system to get people back and forth out of the downtown area? That's a, a question that's come up for several decades Carol, and, and it's it's a valid question, and you would think the utilitarian value of getting people from point A to point B and a bunch of points along along the line, the rubber tire bus system and the circulator buses, for whatever reason, people don't take those as seriously as uh, streetcars, where the track is in the in the street. It's a sense of permanency. So, in order to get economic developers and developers to put apartment complexes, put retail all kinds of different businesses along that line, they see the permanency of a streetcar line as opposed to a bus route that they could they could change the the course. And uh, it's, it's been proven around the country that way. And uh, the, the idea is to uh, get more people uh, using the ridership. Sometimes you go and visit another city and you see some amazing development in that city and you're tempted to say things like this gosh, I wish Omaha would do something like this, or Omaha's so backwards, we don't have this, this, or that. And I think we're at a point in time right now in our city's development where we can do something big and bold that sure might have a little bit of a risk to it, but really not a ton. We can do something big and bold, which allows us to start a chain reaction, which leads to some really cool stuff. And when you look at a lot of the cities that have done these streetcars, the amount of collateral real estate development within three blocks of those streetcars is amazing. Usually billions of dollars for only a couple miles of track. And so when you look at that kind of return on investment, you got to think to yourself, that's not a hard decision to make. You know, if I'm going to get billions of dollars of investment out of a few hundred million dollars um, of initial investment, you, you, you take that bet. And, and then one of the things I think people don't realize, because they some people will say, oh, on one per- side of the political spectrum, you're giving money away to private companies. And the other side of the political spectrum says, you're wasting our taxpayer dollars. What I know, though, is that if you have billions of dollars of investment, you end up getting not only eventually more property tax revenue, but it creates more activity, which means more income tax revenue, more sales tax revenue, more producing type people living in certain parts of the city where we desperately need them, more quality of life that attracts more people. And and the other thing it does is it, uh, it brings more options and choices into your city, which makes your whole economy and your culture healthier. And you really only have to go three hours down the road to Kansas City and see their streetcar is, what, 10 years old now? If Very successful. Very successful. All right. Uh, good call, Carol. Thank you. Bill, you're next up on the show. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, I have a question. Um, recently in Nebraska Furniture Mart, I've been reading there, there's been some concerns with the floodplain there and either growth or changes to their plan or their operations there. And then it mentioned that they have uh, – like around 2,000 employees. Now, we've also talked about in, in, in the past, a couple months past, about a development north of downtown that involves potentially 2,000 employees. Is there a possible connection there? 
Not not at all. Um, I, okay. I, I'm friends. It's a good with, question. I'm though. friends with the Blumkin family. Ryan Blumkin is a very smart mind, as long long with his team, and um, yeah, they have two thousand. They may have two thousand employees here, but but I think that uh, Nebraska Furniture Mart will stay at seventy second in Dodge uh-huh. area for the foreseeable future. Gotcha. The article talked about working out issues regarding the floodplain, and, and so they can do remodeling and, and put new buildings there. Uh, it's a lot easier, like down in Dallas, and then just announced four hundred million dollar project in Austin, where oh, yeah. they can go from ground up. But they're you know they grew organically and and over time, so Omaha store is not a, a big box or a it, it, it's not laid out as as good as they would like it to be, but over time they can make improvements to that site. The The project downtown north of the ball field, um, we believe that there's some traction there. We don't have all the details, but uh, that would probably be a more of an office type project. That, that's not really a retail site. Brad, you were uh, gotcha. Brad, you were the one that uh, first informed us about that rumor about north downtown. Yeah, it came from someone who uh, owns and runs a business in that uh, building down there, or in one of those buildings down there, and uh, they were very optimistic, and uh, some other people I've since talked to in that area are also kind of echoing uh, the same rumors. So it seems like there's a lot of traction down there. But believe it or not, in this economy and, and the concern about people going back to the office, there are major office users that are out there looking for space. And a lot of them are looking downtown that are currently out west, which um, no one would have predicted uh, at the at the height of the pandemic. Perhaps. And having a, a, a streetcar there in 2026 and the parks system and everything else definitely helps with that decision. Well, a good call, Bill. Now let's go to Jim. Jim, good morning and welcome. Good morning. I have a, maybe a three-part question. First is there's a facility that looks like a distribution center at 72nd and State Street and then further out on State Street at about 114th to 118th, there's two facilities there. I just wonder what those three things are. Okay, the uh, facility at 72nd and State is an Amazon last mile warehouse. Now, 114th and State, is that where that uh, new trucking company well, there, has a terminal? Yeah, there's a new, I think it's RL Carriers. RL, made. Yep. Yeah, their it's logo done. is green. I know that. Yep. Yeah. So that's done and open. And then right next to that, if you're talking about the other project, that's where we. It's a data center. We believe it's Google, but it, it we're we're ninety nine point nine nine percent sure that it's Google. Google would pretty much go around. I think two sides of that uh, yeah. truck center. So that'll be a massive project there. So thank you. Good call, Jim. Now we're going to take our final break of the show. But Lauren and Dean, uh, please stay with us because we'll get to you during the lightning round. We've got a few announcements and some retail restaurant stuff in the lightning round. Then we'll get to Lauren and Dean. You're listening to Jeff Beals, Trenton Magid, and Brad Williams on Grow Omaha, brought to you by D and M Roofing and NAINP Dodge on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Hi, this is Eric. Good stuff. Good, yeah, good callers. Yeah, these are good, good calls. Don't get don't knock on guys. Guys. We don't get yeah. 90th and 90th and center call. Yeah, that annoying anti-smoking guy hasn't called yet. Uh, he hasn't called in a couple of years. About his, well, he, for a while he was Probably like, you know, long cancer. he was, <laughs> don't shit. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, annoying anti-smoking guy, if you're watching Uncut. He didn't mean that. This is not the forum for that. Um, yeah, what, what, what would he Apartment. Oh, he that guy. Oh, did, he got on some other issues. And I think he, my guess is he missed all of the fame and fortune that came with being the anti-smoking guy who always called KFAB, so he had to come up with another cause. Oh. Yeah, he, I know who that is. He, well, he called when you guys were with Selden because he thought Selden should have non-smoking oh, yeah. apartment That guy. Is, was the most annoying human being that would call radio in the years I've been listening to radio. And, and I hate cigarette smoking, but that guy was one of the most annoying persons on the planet. There's just some times when like, everyone agrees. Uh-huh. We don't need to yeah. talk about it. You know? yeah, a, the, we all hate smoking. Move on. <laughs> you don't see vapors very often in public. People vaping. You see the big puff of smoke come out their right. car window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, my God, what just happened to that car? Oh, it's a vape. <laughs> it's like, you ever watch that, you know, the movie Christmas uh, Vacation, that every yeah. Christmas, there's that one scene where the Uncle Lewis lights the Christmas tree, tree on fire, and the rest of the family's sitting in the dining room, and that big flame that comes out. That's the way some of the vapors are. Like, Jeez, what just I came saw, out of that car? I saw a real on Facebook or something about the... Uh, in 
vacation when Clark and his wife are, are doing dishes. Yeah. And he, he, like, she's in the sink or whatever, and she wipes, she, she like, wipes off food or whatever, and he just takes it and puts it in the cabinet. They don't put it in the dishwasher. I've noticed that before, actually. I've seen that movie way too many times. Way too many times. Such a good movie, though. And Grow Omaha is back. Jeff, Trenton, and Brad sitting in here. We're going to get to Lauren and Dean, our last two callers here in just a moment. But first, it's the lightning round brought to you by who? Turner Construction. Turner Construction, one of the biggest and best construction contractors on planet Earth. But they're here in Omaha doing projects of all sizes. I mean, as big as the Facebook data center uh, at uh, Highway 50 and uh, Cape Heart Road, uh, which, by the way, if you haven't been by there, the phases five and six on the southwest corner of that intersection are going up like crazy. And they're more prominent and noticeable from Highway 50 than the first few phases on the north side of Cape Heart. But they also do build-outs for offices. You see all those Chase Bank branches around town popping up. Turner Construction does all of those. So um, if your company is looking to do a project, whether it's uh, building out space in a retail center or building a new headquarters or anything in between, call Turner Construction. Uh, they will treat you well. They'll deliver you a fantastic project, and they will do it effectively, uh, responsibly, and ethically. Uh, we love having Turner Construction as a sponsor of our lightning round. Thanks to them for that. So, guys, a few things that we want to go through. Build out is underway for Texas Day Brazil in the Capital District. That's coming along pretty nicely. Hacienda Real, Mexican restaurant out of Lincoln, which is coming to 79th and Cass, is looking at about an April 1st opening. 402 Beer and Spirits has opened a store at 132nd and Maple. Um, they have, it says they have craft and domestic beers plus wine and liquor. Walk-in Beer Cave, which is kept at 36 degrees. Uh, Trenton, we've got the Relax the Back store is doing a little bit of change, and it involves Omaha, Kansas City, and Minneapolis. Yeah, they moved they move their warehouse down to Kansas City. They're still serving their Omaha clients, but um, uh, Tom Adams, who's been the longtime proprietor of that, closed it, they closed the, their uh, Center Street store, but you can still get online and, and, and purchase things, and they can deliver it to your house uh, in Omaha. Slice Pizzeria is having a ribbon cutting at Harrah's, inside Harrah's Casino uh, in Council Bluffs. The restaurant Over Easy has reopened after being closed for about a month because of water damage. They're located near 168th and Q. And then, interesting, uh, we have a story from our national real estate news provider, CoStar, which is a real estate data company. They tell us that Chipotle Mexican Grill is going to be expanding dramatically. Uh, they hope to get to 7,000 nationwide stores a few years from now. Currently, they only have 2,966, so big-time growth. Uh, they're based in Newport Beach, California, and uh, going to be adding uh, hundreds of stores every year for the next few years. One of those stores is the brand-new CoStar, which just opened, or of course, Chipotle, <laughs> uh, which just opened near 204th and West Dodge Road in front of the Menards in yep. that area. And so that one is now open. All right, there's your uh, real estate lightning round and retail and business lightning round brought to you by Turner Construction. So we promised two more calls. Lauren, you are next. Good morning, Lauren. Hey, good morning. How are you guys this morning? Good. Thanks for waiting. Hey, at 144th and um, Ida on the uh, northeast corner, do you know what's going to happen to that property? 144th and Ida. I'm trying um, to picture it right now. Oh, I know. That's uh, there's a neighborhood just beyond there, but that's that. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, is reserved for future kind of commercial retail development. Um, which a lot of times, what they try to do there. There's an old saying that we in real estate use called uh, "retail follows rooftops," and right. so you build your residential neighborhoods most of the time before your neighborhood service retail goes in there. And so a placeholder. That's a placeholder Wait, lot. Are you talking, there's a small building going up right now on 144th and Ida on the northwest corner? 
Is that? Yeah, that that's a uh, Runza. Runza. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's just classic neighborhood service retail that will be in that area, um, and and it's just a classic retail following the rooftops. Probably would have opened sooner if it was ten years ago, but things have been kind of weird uh, with retail development in the last two years. Yeah. The I know the mixed use plan for that shows apartments, uh, an office building, and a, a little retail building too. So it'll be a nice area. Thank you, Lauren, for waiting. And our final caller of the day, Dean. Hi, Dean. Morning. How you doing today? Good. Thank you for waiting. What question I have? I've seen a lot of dirt movement south of the Cobalt Credit Union main headquarters over in Papillion on Seventy Second Street. Wondered if you had any idea what's going on there. It is mostly a single family residential neighborhood, uh, but there's also a uh, apartment complex with seven, eight buildings going in there, and uh, and eventually uh, Papillion La Vista schools will have a, a school to the south of the, the neighborhood, but most of it's single-family residential. And they're getting more activity across the street at the, at the uh, Shadow Lake Town Center. Guys, we timed that perfectly, pretty much nailed it. That's it for this week. Stuck the landing. Stuck the landing. <laughs> Brad, thanks for joining hey, us thanks as always. thanks for having me. I really enjoy it. Brad Williams, Brad Williams Photography, ENA Consulting. That's it for this week. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by NAINP Dodge, DNM Roofing, and Turner Construction. We'll chat with you next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Good one. Good show. Good show. Good call. Great calls. What's that? Great yeah. calls today. Maybe the best collection of calls we've yeah. had in terms of being pertinent. Yeah. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.